Welcome to Fiction Authors Talk Books or Fat Books Podcast. This episode, I'm talking with the beautiful Barbara Russell about different types of plotters and having to adjust at times. It's a bit shorter of an episode because we had some technical problems and about half of the recording was corrupted and unusable. I apologize for that, but I promise it's still a good time. I named this podcast Fiction Authors Talk Books because I wanted to incorporate all aspects of being a fiction author in the discussions. Being an author is a stressful job with high expectations from both ourselves and our fans, so this will always be a chill conversation that probably goes off topic most times, but we'll have some fun. If you enjoyed the podcast and would like to see your favorite author on here, send them this link and they can get in touch with us at fatbookspodcast at gmail. We take all authors who write fiction and have been published as long as they're polite. Thanks for joining and on to the podcast. Now, how hard do you find, because you, I'm assuming you, you write in English then, right? So, but it's yes. not your first language? No. <laughs> so how hard is that for you? Because I can't imagine, well, I wasn't very good in Spanish. I, I, I wish I was good in languages. I'm just not. But how, how much harder is that for you? Or does your editor help with that? Or uh, Well, it, writing is definitely easier than speaking because I got plenty of time to structure the sentence, to check the grammar. Uh, it's definitely very hard, very hard. Uh, at, the, at first, I really had to force my brain uh, to think in English. Uh, trust me, it was painful. <laughs> I knew I that I problem was... in English is my first language, so I believe you. <laughs> let's 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 call a spade a spade. I actually am not very good at spelling and grammar. I am just good at well. I hope I'm good at telling a story, and I like words. Like words, I mean, like I find them fascinating. So I'm pretty good mm-hmm. at actually using the words. But yeah, I'm not great when it comes to grammar. I don't need to be. Um, That's what an editor's for. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, putting putting you were saying putting it to, before I was a smart ass. Um, you were saying putting it all together is yeah yeah that's that's really difficult uh, but I knew I was on the right track when I started to dream in English I thought, oh I dream in English <laughs> that's that's a good sign uh, I just read a lot uh, hear a lot watch everything and it's always uh, I always have a notepad with me because I always take notes about everything about New words, I don't know. Slang, slang is so difficult, so difficult. Yeah. And uh, oh gosh, so especially American slangs because I'm more familiar with the UK slangs or New Zealand, of course, or Aussies. It's more, it's definitely easier. But yeah, American slangs are sometimes you know so that the words don't make any sense. Like uh, you call the banks, and the first time I saw it, uh, and it's uncountable. I thought, what, 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 I don't cut your bangs. And I thought, oh gosh. What's oh, that? bangs. I thought you said bangs. bangs. I'm like, what would you call oh, them no, no. otherwise? <laughs> your bangs. Okay, what do you guys call them? Uh, the fringe. We call it Oh, fringe. and your hair is fringe? I've yes. never heard that. Yes. Fringe. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard that. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, there are some things that just, uh, yeah, throw you off yeah. because you don't know what, what it means. Oh, even the difference, you know, between pavement and sidewalk. Or oh, here in New Zealand, we call it a, a footpath. But a footpath in the United States, from what I understood, is something wild. Like a hiking it's trail. A tra- yeah, oh, it's like a hiking uh, trail. Yeah. Or when you say, oh, I was walking on the footpath, and people will say, what? Is it in the forest or something? <laughs> and I yeah. was totally confused. <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I thought it's fascinating. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really hard, really hard. Of course, I got better readers and editors who help me. But I really want to learn. That's the thing. I I want to be good. <laughs> yeah. At what I do. So I just try to work really hard to to reach a certain level because it's not that when I, f- I started, I got lots of people say, "Oh, but I can't understand what you mean." That's not the point because I just don't want to be understood. I want sound properly, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I have people. Uh, there's a. I I totally get what you're saying, and you definitely want to be the best you can be at your craft. But there's a lot of that I get, and I'm English is my first language. Like you know, um, I've had people just because it's the Midwest and it's something they don't understand, or people just. Hmm. So I think there's a level of that no matter what it is. Like I've had um, 
it was like a smack or slug or something. It was one of those kind of words where we, we kept going back and forth and neither one of us were wrong, but it was just because just we were in from different locations. Mm-hmm. So we're both outliners and yes. you were saying you outlined the whole series? Yes, if I have to draw a series, I prefer to outline the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I usually start with just like a, slow, a short blurb of the story, the first okay. book. And then I expand it uh, until it becomes a synopsis. So okay. like 800 words. And then I expand it again until I uh, outline all the main plot points. So the inciting incident, uh, the first... Uh, uh, twist and then uh, the dark moment, the haha moment, and so on. And uh, I do the same for the every other books of the series. And then I start drafting. And my first draft it's like uh, something between a first draft and a very detailed outline. Mm-hmm. And when I finish, I start with the second book, and then with the third book, and then with the fourth, and then I start all over again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really need a complete vision of the story, otherwise I get lost. <laughs> no, that, that definitely makes sense. Now, do you have a lot of, like, how do your notes work then? Um, I have different files. I know that some people use, like, um, Scrivener for outline but they use what does scrivener is a software oh okay it just software for outline because it gives you the chance to add pictures and uh, oh okay to file. yeah but no i just use words because i'm comfortable with it and i but i divided everything in different sections where i got like character descriptions Character names and uh, in another files I have the pictures, you know, the room, so I can describe a room uh, always consistently in the same way, so I don't yeah. forget to test. And um, I use pin interests as well to. Okay. To yeah. Use, yeah. Um, I don't do a lot of describing of rooms because mm. I I kind of feel like a kitchen is a kitchen is a kitchen, but like yeah yeah it's, yeah. But I like if a. I always bring it back to the character, basically, with the mm-hmm. description of, like, if it was the first time she had ever remodeled or had a house of her own, what did she want to make it? Like, that's what oh, yeah. I describe a lot of this stuff. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. I also try to keep in mind, like, if it's the character is someone who's very tidy. Mm-hmm. And oh, I like for to sure. Remember, exactly. I like to remember that so that everything looks a certain way and especially the kitchen when you want to be when you're cooking you want to be fast so you if you are organized and precise you have you know how to move <laughs> right or that mm. shows emotional distress if everything is messed oh, up yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah so now when you outline because for me it's like scenes i like kind of lay down the railroad tracks of scenes mm-hmm. and little tidbits or like because I also have a, a, I have all the files that you do, but I also have an open threads that like I want to mm. go back to or I need to revisit oh, yeah. and close them. Is that how your outlines more or less work? Where it's like, yes, yes actually I do exactly the same because I I start with the scenes, and if I get stuck, I just keep the scene and I just keep going, and I I go back to that later when I, I have more clear idea or how to write it. Right, yeah, that's kind of how I roll with it too. I go through layers, uh, so I just revise, 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 so that I can add more details until I something I'm happy with. So, how do you do? You like leave breadcrumbs for your characters for like to look at later, and kind of that's how you can see the growth, or just in your plots in general. Oh, I I try to do that. Oh, I think I can <laughs> do that, but yeah, because since I. I write an outline, I keep in mind the character arc and uh, try to plant this little seed throughout the story. And uh, yeah, the idea is that when you reread the story, you might notice all these things, but sometimes it's not like that. <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes the readers work like super fast and they don't notice all these little details. So, but... <laughs> It's a bit sad when this happens, when you say, oh, but I put these little details and no one noticed. <laughs> yeah. You, you do the same? 
the the Easter eggs and breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm big on breadcrumbs. I oh. I like the breadcrumbs, not in just in my stories in real life too. But my editor went back to read over some of the Artemis books that she didn't edit so we could put them out for print hopefully soon god hopefully everybody mm -hmm. asks i get an email a day asking me for print books for that um but oh. anyway so we're, we're working on them to get them out in print and she flags mm -hmm. a few things and she's like you never make this mistake i'm glad you ditched that editor and came to me because i would never let this happen and mm -hmm. i was dying because what it is is you know how like when you say somebody's name it's capitalized but mother versus my mom isn't mm -hmm. capitalized kind of thing it, he kept calling her princess and I was capitalizing it. And I did that intentionally in the first book as a, like an mm -hmm. Easter egg. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, I had people that were like, this is an error. I'm like, no, it's <sighs> not. And I did that intent. I thought it was a fun Easter egg that she's going to be a princess and you're going to find this out. Mm -hmm. It is funny for me when people are like, I didn't see that coming. I'm like, you didn't see the breadcrumbs. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do you look for to always include on your characters then? Like, what is the, the important thing to make sure that uh, they have or? Um, uh, definitely the a good inner conflict. Yeah. Um, something that they deeply fear something that uh, prevent them from growth so mm -hmm. that's what i really always want to include and uh, um keeping that in mind i also try to find a scene where this fear is challenged and uh, where the character must face these fears and overcome it so that's what i mean things as when i outline as well so that's why I start with the character that's in their conflict. How do you keep them separate? How do you get keep the characters from not blending into each other? Because you always want them to be strong or you always want them to be, you know, especially your male characters. I usually write mostly on the female's point of view. And I try to remember just one main trait of the characters, uh, which could be, I don't know, um, strength or... Uh, ambitious or um, uh, pride or whatever and uh, just try to remember at least that so that it comes from that point the trait and try to keep it steady throughout the books considering the character arc of course so there should be some changes throughout the story but yeah mostly right from the female point of view so um, Mm, like yeah, because so uh, you write in first person too, and that's first person, yeah, point of view from the female. So uh, I know that some readers have problem with that because some wants to read also the male point of view. Yeah, uh, I I don't always use it because it depends on the story. Because if there is some kind of mystery around right. the male character, I don't <laughs> immediately bring it here because. It could be a spoiler, so I prefer to focus on the female and then develop everything from there. Yeah, the I mean, most, yeah, well, most of my series, yeah, but I have a couple where, um, mm. I have a couple where each, each kind of of the guys or a different guy, or even there was one chapter where it was just a different friend, but like four chapters out of the like 22 are from a mm -hmm. different perspective. Oh. It's, it's still mm -hmm. first person. But like mm -hmm. she's kind of just getting that outside of like most most of the times it's when she's like injured or unconscious and then oh, you yeah, just want to keep yeah. the story going. But mm -hmm. um, a lot of times it's like just getting that that viewpoint. You enjoy writing the male point of view? Oh, uh, I find it interesting. I, I see it a lot of times as like stuff that, more just how I would want to what I would want to know from the reader's perspective and give them a little mm -hmm. taste of it. Yeah. So it's not, plus I just like doing different things on my different series. Like I don't want mm -hmm. them to always all be the same. Yeah. And what, what type of uh, male character do you like? You know, there are different types, like there is the alpha, who also is kind of toxic and a lots of romance that trade. I don't, type I don't like characters. those. Yeah, no, no I, 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 I like the nice guys. I like the flawed nice guys. Um, mm. there's several that I like. I think that's, that's part of the interest in them in general is like, 
doing a little bit of different this and that. Um, I don't always do like I like in Artemis, there is a sexy bookworm kind of vibe guy, which I find hot. Mm -hmm. And then there's more mm -hmm. the um, somewhat clueless hot professor guy that you know just is super intelligent but makes him kind of an idiot sometimes like I like kind of having all those different roles because I mm -hmm. everybody likes a little something different and like mm -hmm. I was saying you can't have them blend so oh, then yeah. what do you do yeah. mm. that's good <laughs> I just keep track <laughs> I write the, the profile the character profile and uh, I write everything about the character, starting with the backstories, because it's the backstory that usually gives you the character who he is now in the present. Right. So, uh, it, it just uh, try not to make yeah all of them the same, like not all of them too sweet. Maybe one of them is a little bit more dominant, the other is uh, uh, more shy. So just try to keep that in mind why it's so, so difficult and it also depends on the female character yeah because it depends on the, what she likes <laughs> so that's so, so a guideline as well yeah no i totally agree with that yeah you have the different female or even them being different and having different roles like yeah. you know she's going to be queen of um of her her planet and people she can't mm -hmm. she's not the type that would have a big alpha guy you know taking mm -hmm. her over oh, but other yeah. times other times you know you want like a, a woman would want that they want to <laughs> you know they would want to just pass it over for the night and have some fun so yeah um i think it's interesting to have all the sides of that mm -hmm. yeah my, my favorite type is anyway the the so-called cinema roles which is the sweet guy uh would respect the heroine and doesn't bully her <laughs> this type of guy is cinnamon the, roll Cinnamon roll, yeah. It sounds like cinnamon roll, like you eat. That's what we're yeah, not yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it, you are saying cinnamon roll. Exactly, yeah. Oh, he's a softy inside. Exactly, yeah. Oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> he's a super sweet cinnamon roll. Okay, that's not a common US phrase. Alpha mellow. Oh my God, leave this whole part in. This is hysterical to me. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> because you, yes, the alpha <laughs> mellow, is the, the one is between the alpha hole and the cinema roles is someone who oh is a bit confident but is not so dominant or so jerky to, uh, to other girls so i was thinking like alpha beta omega delta oh. and you're like cinnamon cinnamon roll and i'm like spell it out and you're like yeah no cinnamon roll super sweet guy and i'm <laughs> oh my god i was oh that was that was a good one i totally get what you're saying yeah i don't i don't want a doormat as a as a as, yeah. as a love interest and i don't want somebody who's going to be a, a jackass you know i want exactly. yeah i want somebody in between somebody competent mm. yeah all that alpha male stuff about banging on your chest or whatever i don't find any of that sexy yeah no, i find it worthy either. of being kicked to the curb yeah exactly. what do you find is like your favorite character flaw to give the guys or even the females oh um well sometimes i base the females on me and so my biggest problem, I think, is the I don't have a great opinion of me or myself. Yeah. So I, I put always, often, uh, without realizing sometimes, they put that in the in the book. And what the heroine doesn't think she can do something uh, because she's not good enough. So I, I yeah, I, I saw that there is a pattern in there. It kind of worried me because. Uh, that's the way I feel, and I'm not sure uh, people would understand because sometimes people have problems with that when the heroine uh, kind of is not confident enough, you know? Yeah. But that's who I am, so... <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree, and I'm kind of the same way. Like, it's, they're all, most of the female characters are somewhat rooted in me. Not to be like I'm fabulous, but I actually do test well IQ-wise. But it mm -hmm. makes me a little dense in certain things. Oh, um, yeah. Like I, I have trouble connecting because of that and other things. So it's like, mm -hmm. for me, yeah, I just, it's like that foundation. And I've had people be like, this isn't believable. I'm like, I'm standing right here and it's my real life. Like I don't yeah. pick up yeah. on some of those cues or some of that stuff. So I find that really 
interesting. I've had characters that have flaws that I don't necessarily have, and it, I find it so much harder to write. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But it's agree. how do you keep them all not sounding exactly like you? How do you branch it out then? I read a lot of psychology book for this reason to try to understand how a person who is different from me might feel. Uh, also, for example, I don't consider myself a very angry person because that's not who I am. But if I want to write uh, someone If you need to talk about to somebody with a temper, just give me a call because I'm laughing here going, yeah. Yeah, yeah hmm. I read a lot about uh, angry uh, people with uh, anger management, management issues. issues. Yeah. Uh, we have my anger management pretty well, but I have a temper. I actually, when I was in college, I was going through a lot oh. and... um. Not to TMI, but uh, they have found some precancerous tumors in uh, oh. my uterus. So, yeah, I had a lot of reason to be angry. It was pretty fair. But I actually went to an anger management class and got I got tossed out. Um, <gasps> not, well, the, the reasoning is funny because most people, when they have explosive anger, like you mm -hmm. hear that phrase of like, oh, I saw red or I didn't realize what I yeah. was doing. Yeah. I got tossed out because... The instructor was like, you know exactly what you're doing and you're you're calculating and saying this is worth the risk of paying a fine or something. And that's oh. not somebody I can help. And I'm mm -hmm. like, they're like, you'll you'll find your own way on your own, but you're not a good influence. I'm like, nope, that's worth it. P getting in trouble for punching some jerk in the face is totally worth it. And so, mm. yeah, I got thrown out of anger management. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's like, don't ever tell that story. I think it's hysterical because how many people can actually say that? Like, but I also think yeah. it means I wasn't as messed up because like I, I never yeah. saw red. I never really lost mm. control. I was calculating like, nope, mm. this would be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's never like I've really gotten, I mean, I've gotten a, a fights a couple times at school, but it's not like I have, I, I have a completely clean record. So clearly I didn't mm. do anything bad, but yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. My problem or what I was trying to help with is that I have trouble expressing. I have trouble sitting down and just talking about something upsetting me. What about the guys? What are the flaws you like to have with your, your male lead? Oh, I like the tormented hero <laughs> who's yeah. secretly pining for the heroine. That's my favorite type. Okay. And someone is, yeah, he's, he's sweet. I just like sweet guys. And uh, I, I don't mind someone is very confident to the point to be a little bit dominant a little cocky uh, because I, yeah exactly i like that i like someone who's a leader type and uh, who know what he's doing uh, but yeah too much when he cross the threshold and uh, when the hero becomes just a jerk to other girls i don't that's the turn off for me um because also I experienced that through my skin, so I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Uh, the, I mean, now I realize that it was a toxic relationship, and yeah, um, I realize my mistakes absolutely. So hindsight uh, is twenty twenty, and all that. Yeah. <laughs> so I try to stay away from the type, but, oh, but when I try, when I outline, I realize that sometimes I go there without realizing. And I have the heroine becoming a doormat and the hero becoming a jerk. And I, like, oh, no, that's not good. I like, whoopsies. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. You discover I find, a lot I've about I've done yourself. that a lot in my real life, too, where it's like, oh, I'm a doormat. This is great. <laughs> yeah. I agree that I like the sweet guys um, professionally and personally. But I also like the ones who come off very confident. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then yeah. you find out that they've been kind of faking it just like the rest of us. For one, I find it incredibly relatable. And mm -hmm. like I have a character where he's so she can like she's got tele uh, telepathy and she can show them like images or she can show them things that have happened. And she's had to to work on control or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's and uh, several times he's like, is that how you really see me? I'm so put together and just like amazing. 
in your view. He's like, you really love me if that's how you see me. And she's like, no, that's how you come off. Uh, she does love him. But also she says several times, like, I'm not the only one with self-esteem issues if that's not how you see yourself. And I think that's important to have that kind of reality and gravity to them. What parts do you struggle with? Like, I have trouble a lot of times redeeming their bad behavior. Like, what's the line between over the top or the females, the jerk, you know? But, uh, the, the problem is that, yeah, when you have a scene that is considered over the top, it's because probably I didn't uh, build up to the moment properly. Mm -hmm. So I just look back and uh, add more scene when uh, you can see the change in the character and there is a build up that lead naturally to that point. So that is not considered, oh, she's just bipolar because I got even this comment. Oh, one moment she's fine, the next she's going crazy. So that's, I get this comment is because probably I didn't work hard enough to show uh, the internal reason that lead to that moment. So yeah. It's a slow build up and of course it has to be something that it's in the character to start with because if it's a character like me who doesn't get angry often and even a moment where the character becomes so wild where it wouldn't make sense uh, so I just try to keep that in mind because I, I like actually when the, the character of course argue because conflict <laughs> yeah uh, it, it needs to be done naturally uh not, and not just for the sake of arguing exactly exactly it also depends on the on the other guys of course and uh, at this part when when you write romance you need those scenes because it's when the two characters start to know each other and falling in love so the, there needs to be lots of conflict uh, it should be Productive. Well, there's a that's the whole cliche of there's a thin line between love and hate, and I think that's that yeah. is very true a lot of times. Yes, 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 yes. But yeah, you have uh, through through conflict, you get the growth of the character. So you need that moment when they start butting head for some reason. Of course, it's not an, doesn't have to be something uh, explosive. It could be just an argument, uh, quite uh, uh, soft. But you need that. Uh, yeah, it depends. Yeah, on the situation of the plot point uh, uh, on uh, on the male as well. Oh no, for sure, and that's yeah. hard. I think sometimes to round it out. But I have characters like her love interests are like five or six people, and it's so amazing to me. Oh. Like, yes, there's there's kind of one guy that's the nice guy, and maybe something will happen later, but he's never really messed up. But like, it's amazing to see how different people like like certain characters better because there's one that is actually my favorite that I'm always like wow they're so harsh on him or they're really nice to the guy that I'm like wow I would like him least if I was the reader mm -hmm. and it's so crazy to me to see that but I mean that's that's just how people are different and good thing um, we don't all like the same guy you know that would be difficult you have um one uh, female character and many love interested right yeah oh, yeah wow. most of that's mine are so, like that sounds difficult to write I think it's more fun that way. <laughs> One woman should always that have multiple it. guys. That's my that's my view. Um, I don't. There's. I've only done a, a couple small novellas, or like when I used to write um, male male books, like where they only had one love interest. Mm -hmm. But yeah, most of my actually, I'm pretty sure all. Well. One of my series, she's she's gone through multiple guys, but only one at a time kind of vibe. Um, but yeah, most of my series have at least two or three, four or five, six or, you know. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's an easy way to keep the conflict going. No, not easy. It's oh, yeah. definitely not easy keeping it all straight and going. But it gives uh -huh. you a lot more... Um, a lot more, yeah, a lot more to pull from the pool of, of whatever, if there's more guys or whatever. I want to give a big thanks to Barbara Russell for joining me for such a fun conversation. Also, to all of our fans for checking this podcast out. I hope you liked what you heard and decide to stick around. Please make sure to subscribe to the Fat Books podcast on YouTube or Spotify or that little purple icon on your Apple device. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook to stay up to date on who we're recording with and when episodes are coming out. There's also a Patreon if you want to support the podcast and keep it going. Let's hear a bit about what Barbara's working on and what to look forward to from her next. Um, 
Um, I have a new release on January. It's a paranormal, steamy romance, which is set in medieval times. It's the first time I write a medieval romance. It's a sort of origin story for Dracula, but the, the paranormal element is actually not so strong. It's mostly almost subtle historical romance than uh, paranormal, but there okay. is a paranormal element. And now I'm editing the one of the book of a series, and I'm definitely struggling <laughs> because <laughs> oh, I no. need so many things. I want to rewrite so many scenes that I actually thinking about rewriting the old things. So uh, you know the feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think what I'm doing. So yeah, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> Thanks for staying until the end, and hope you enjoyed it.